Great, thank you so much, everybody. I've really enjoyed all the talks so far and I appreciate the opportunity to present my leadership college project. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> so in 2011, Dr. Tina Shanafelt and her colleagues surveyed physicians nationwide in a variety of medical and surgical specialties. They found that physicians were more likely to have symptoms of burnout and to be dissatisfied with work-life balance when compared to a probability-based sample of US working adults. At this point, as you can see with the arrow, dermatologists were well below the average and had the second lowest rate of burnout amongst practicing physicians, which is great. Fast forward just a few years later, the authors repeated their survey study and dis discovered that the situation had worsened for all specialties. Specifically, dermatologists were now amongst the top 10 physicians experiencing burnout and were well above the average amongst all physicians. They had actually experienced the greatest change increase over time out of all specialties. Next slide, please. So let's start with the definition that we can all kind of um, work from. So burnout is defined as a syndrome of emotional exhaustion, loss of meaning in work, feelings of ineffectiveness, and a tendency to view people as objects rather than as human beings or what is known as depersonalization. And why is this important? It has effects on an individual's personal life, on the quality of care they are able to provide, patient care errors, and on physician turnover. Specifically, if we can address physician burnout, we can potentially have fewer physician suicides, decrease physician turnover, and improved associated costs to the healthcare system, as well as improve patient satisfaction and outcomes. Next slide, please. Click. So as you can see, there has been a steady increase in publications regarding burnout. A recent PubMed search found over 20,000 unique articles on burnout when using the search term burnout. A PubMed search done at the same time using burnout and dermatology revealed only 91 results. So not much is known in the literature regarding why so many dermatologists are experiencing burnout. Next slide, please. By comparison, we know a little bit more about space aliens than we do about burnout amongst dermatologists. Next slide, please. So my project aimed to explore possible explanations for this dramatic shift in burnout by measuring the prevalence of burnout, burnout specific symptoms and drivers of burnout. This is especially relevant during the COVID-19 crisis affecting all physicians. With additional input from burnout experts from Wake Forest School of Medicine, Dr. Cormac O'Donovan and the North Carolina Physicians Health Program, Dr. Clark Gaither, the survey instrument was further adjusted. And you can see the questions uh, in my write-up. After review, input, and approval by the North Carolina Dermatology Association Executive Committee, an invitation to complete the survey was sent to the general membership. A reminder email was sent one week later, and the survey remained open for a total of two weeks' time. And we asked various questions assessing the prevalence and severity of burnout symptoms, we were asked to describe factors that contributed to burnout in dermatology and some basic demographic information. Next slide, please. So in regards to the response rate, it was approximately 10%. So 44 of our 423 total members responded to the survey. 29 respondents were in private practice, as well as 15 um, identified being in academic practice. 29 uh, identified working in a suburban area and 15 identified working in an urban area. And the average years in practice was 23 years with a range of seven to 47 years in practice. Next slide, please. So when we asked, do you feel burned out from work? We got the following response. So this is frequency of burnout. So some members said, nope, I never feel burned out at all. Some responded maybe a few times a year or less, some a few times a month. And we had actually some participants stated that they had you no know, feeling burned out from work every day. Next slide, please. Looking at severity, we asked, please rate the severity of your burnout on a scale of zero, which is none, to seven most of year, AKA you're ready to leave medicine. And as you can see from the slide, there was a wide range of severity that was noted on the survey. Next slide, please. So when we asked specifically, 
do you think that the COVID-19 pandemic has contributed to your burnout? About 56% said yes and 44% said no. And the following reasons were given for uh, those who responded, yes, I felt that the COVID-19 pandemic contributed to my burnout, which are things that we could probably guess. Fear of contracting COVID-19, feeling isolated from your colleagues, inability to do the things that we love to do because of social distancing requirements, uncertainty about the future, and I don't know if we're any better today than we were when the survey was sent out and so on. Next slide, please. We asked also, were there any changes made to your clinic due to the pandemic? And they responded, many had reduced clinic volume, uh, reduced time in clinic, uh, staff were being furloughed, they implemented teledermatology and so on. Next slide, please. Specifically looking at telemedicine, about 83% of the respondents started to implement teledermatology or telemedicine as part of their practice, something that they did not do before the COVID-19 pandemic. 70%, yeah, didn't really feel like that teledermatology contributed to their burnout, although half said that it really was not an effective method of patient care. Next slide, please. So in my opinion, burnout has been one of those epidemics amongst physicians that was forgotten during the COVID-19 pandemic. For many years, you could not go to any medical education meeting without hearing a talk about burnout, resilience, or wellness. And there's evidence that burnout amongst dermatologists is rising and rising at a rate faster than any other medical specialty. And the COVID-19 pandemic is not helping and is possibly making this concerning trend worse. The limitation of this project include a relatively low response rate, 10% of our membership, and inherent bias with a voluntary survey study. Similar to many medical professional organizations, members tend to associate our organization with high quality CME meetings and statewide advocacy efforts. This was actually the first survey of its kind distributed to the general membership, which could have accounted for the relatively low response rate. In addition, this was a voluntary survey with no financial incentive to complete and took approximately 10 minutes to finish, which could also have contributed to lower engagement numbers. Now we did discuss the results and presented them to the uh, North Carolina Dermatology Association Executive Committee meeting this past summer in July. As a leader within the organization, it was very important for me to do this work and place it on the radar for the future of our organization as burnout is likely not going away. The results were well received and a commitment for possible future survey efforts to have a comparison data to evaluate trends um, was discussed. Next slide, please. So as a native North Carolinian, as a practicing dermatologist, an immediate past president of the North Carolina Dermatology Association, this project evaluating burnout amongst my colleagues in the state of North Carolina was particularly meaningful. Being able to work with burnout experts made our survey instrument more precise than previous research I had done in 2019 when I had surveyed a nationwide sample of dermatologists. So the study showed that dermatologists in North Carolina are experiencing a wide range in both the frequency and severity of their burnout during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, physicians faced a variety of issues, which I don't think are necessarily unique to my specialty during the pandemic, including reduced clinic time, reduced clinic volume for load staff, and the implementation of telemedicine. The vast majority of providers Stated off, started offering telemedicine during the pandemic. And despite many feeling that telemedicine was not an effective delivery method of patient care, most did not feel that this was a contributor to their burnout. Next slide, please. So thank you so much everybody for their time, for your time. Please be well and stay safe. And I'll take any questions.